Mr. Chairman, I recognize the gentleman from New York, Mr. Esposito, for your questioning. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good afternoon. <clears throat> thank you all for your service and for being here. Uh, it seems that one of the primary hurdles to successful prosecution of organized criminal groups repeatedly targeting retail businesses is the difficulty to tie an individual or group to multiple incidents across several jurisdictions, such as patterns, rather than looking at each incident individually, which fails to recognize the toll the group may have and may be taking on a particular retailer. I want to thank the chairman for his work in this committee, and one of the things um, that we've been focusing on, the committee that I chair, the subcommittee of emergency management and technology, is, is communication and, and cooperation between different agencies. Uh, I spent a career in the NYPD, and I think that as law enfor enforcement professionals, uh, we could probably say that one of the greatest tools in our tool belt is communication with other agencies. So I think what's important for those that are listening back home and, and for those here, what resources are available from agencies like yours that could specifically help local and state agencies so that we can do a better job? So again, I go back highlighting our task force initiatives around the country, so developing things like our safe streets, organized crime task forces that have unique threats, unique, unique responsibilities, establishing our major theft task forces, and then separately, uh, the OCDF program for the department, for the FBI, for other elements of the department is really uh, our core model for collaboration, uh, communication, and deconfliction, both at the federal and state level. So we're working with our partners in OCDF to actually develop a strategic initiative to help target organized retail theft, to really just better allow resources and funding uh, and, and communication efforts at the federal and state level throughout the country. Thank you. Thank you. Uh and I would re echo ILC2, which is a center that we obviously, all of the federal agencies here at the table deconflict in. Uh, that's a great resource for federal level. State level has some other challenges because they don't all talk to each other. However, a lot of them participate in what PD does uh, in the accurate database, which kind of allows all state agencies to talk. But our cyber fraud task force, you know, similar to these other task forces, again, that's how we kind of inject tools, resources. Again, that's funded by you that goes directly back out to the offices. That's how we do it. Uh, it's been highly successful. Uh, I was telling the gentleman here today, 80% of some of the forensic work I do is not even for my agency. It's for state and local agencies. Sir, thank you. Uh, having worked in New York City, I know NYPD's finest very well, and thank you for your service. Thank you. Uh, you know, I can certainly speak to our centers of excellence, uh, cross-border financial crime, our cyber crime center, our National Intellectual Property Rights and Coordination Center, and many, many others, Innovation Lab. Um, you know, certainly, they're all great centers that provide great resources and, and information uh, to federal agencies, and I think what we're doing, and we need to do a better job, is making sure that we're reaching into our private sector um, and state and local partners to ensure that they understand the resources available to them. I think the National Intellectual Property Rights Center that we lead uh, is certainly a great example of the, the private sector and public partnerships uh, that we need to use to enhance our investigations. Uh, you know, I think until we have those, you know, kind of that holistic view and whole of government and private sector uh, view on, on crime, uh, it'll be tough for us to, uh, to attack this threat. Right. So, Mr. Kroll, to, to your point, um, I think that very often we see that the resources that, that you guys provide, which are amazing, uh, are very often, I guess, from the top down. And, and I guess my question is, how can we do a better job making sure exactly what you mentioned, these smaller law enforcement agencies? I mean, you go back to my district where uh, I represent many villages. Some of those villages have uh, their own police departments and deal with retail crime every single day. Uh, they may not be afforded the same opportunities like the, the big ones, like the NYPD and, and other big law enforcement agencies. So not only, I guess, what, what can we do as members of Congress to make sure that our law enforcement professionals n know exactly the resources that you provide? And I guess the secondary part of that question is, how can we, on, on both sides of the aisle, work with you guys to make sure uh, that one, those resources are there, and number two, uh, that those smaller agencies, even the ones that are tucked in those small towns, who unfortunately are, are battling these issues right on their main streets, how can we make sure that they have uh, the information that they need to take advantage of the great work that you guys are doing? 
And I'd ask briefly, please, as the time is expiring. Yeah, I'm sorry, Chair. I, I, I would just say we need to be non-traditional in our approach, uh, and, and that is possibly, you know, um, inserting our special agents and, and their subject matter expertise into local police departments, much like we have our task force officer program, 4,000 state and local task force officers. It is educate the educator, you know, really train the trainer, let them be the best resource for their local police department to come to HSI or Secret Service or FBI or ATF or wherever it may be. Um, you know, certainly we do that in, in Rhode Island. We do it in Bennington, Vermont, and Rutland, Vermont, and other areas. So I think it's a national model that we all use. Thank you guys very much. I, I would love to follow up with you guys with a conversation after this. Mr. Chairman, I know my time's expired. I yield back. Gentleman's time has expired. Chair now recognizes the gentlelady from 